Imagine not recognizing your spouse, not remembering your child's name, not knowing how to take care of your most basic needs. That's a painful reality of millions of people around the world living with Alzheimer's. Now, U.S. drug maker Eli Lilly says its experimental drug, Donanumab, can slow down the development of the disease. Patients with the disease will inevitably deteriorate, but the company says that process can be delayed by four to seven months. Eli Lilly wants the Federal Drugs Administration to approve its product. The FDA turned down a request for early approval earlier this year and demanded further trials. The company says those trials show the drug slows the development of Alzheimer's in 60% of early stage patients, but also reported significant side effects. Let's take a closer look and bring in Eric Widera. He's a professor of medicine and clinician educator in the Division of Geriatrics at the University of California in San Francisco. He also wrote an editorial published alongside that Eli Lilly report in the Journal of the American Medical Association today. Dr. Videra, welcome to the day. Now, people obviously want a magic bullet to treat Alzheimer's. Is this it? It's a small step forward, um, and it's going to take a lot of small step forwards. What we're seeing with this drug is it's not a cure. It doesn't reverse dementia. So if, if you progress to the point of forgetting people, it's not going to get that back. Hmm. What it does is it slightly lessens the worsening of cognition and function compared to placebo when you get this drug. With a caveat, there's also some significant side effects with the infusions of these drugs, including really expensive cost. We saw some deaths associated with treatment, and there's other issues like brain bleeding with this infusion of the drug. Mm -hmm. It's something that we talked about during the pandemic, if the risks outweigh um, the benefits. What would you say in this case, we're talking about swelling of the brain, microbleeds, should people still go yeah. for this and should the FDA approve this drug? Yeah, so um, they, they approved a very similar drug with very similar outcomes called lecanemab. So I don't see a future where the FDA is not going to approve this drug. And I think you're right. It's all about this balance of benefits versus risks. And the benefits that we're seeing, you know, the primary outcome what they looked at was this 144-point scale. And when you looked at placebo versus those who got the drug, you saw a three-point difference in this 144-point scale. So I would say it's it's a small difference. How clinically meaningful of that, I think, is a big question of debate. But we're also seeing other things like less people progressing to the next stage of disease, which for me matters more than kind of these scales. So that is hopeful. With that said, again, small differences. The, the big concerns is that, A, you have to, for this drug, you have to go in basically monthly, which for lecanemab, the other drug, you had to go in twice a month for infusions. The infusions, you can get infusion reactions. These drugs also seem to cause um, these micro bleeds in the brain, but often ca also cause these bigger bleeds. And we saw three deaths with this study. We saw similar three deaths with the lecanemab study, another one of these amyloid antibody studies. And, um, you know, cost is going to be a big issue, including cost to the healthcare system, to Medicare, and also cost to the individual patient, because there will be co-pays for many individuals, which will put this drug out of reach, as it's probably going to be marketed similar to lecanemab, somewhere around $25,000, just for the drug, not for the infusions, the multiple MRIs, the PET scan. So this is going to require somebody to really be able to work closely with the healthcare system to get all of this stuff. And the biggest issue too is, is that for a lot of individuals, they may live too far away to one of these centers to actually have access to it if they want to do it. And that's a big if, because there, this is not a silver bullet. This is not a drug I would say, absolutely, yes, you should get this if you have mild cognitive impairment or very early Alzheimer's disease. It's a clear no if they have moderate or severe Alzheimer's disease. But it really warrants a discussion with the healthcare provider. Is this going to help me more than it's going to hurt me? Mm -hmm. This is not the first drug aimed at removing deposits of proteins from the brain of Alzheimer's patients. Are the researchers on the right track here, in your opinion? Or are there more significant factors that could then maybe show um, more promising results? Yeah, I think... I think this, drug, this trial tells us two important pieces of information. One is there is a big debate about whether um, 
amyloid, the amyloid hypothesis is, is real, this is the thing that we should be targeting. Is there any evidence that it works? This drug and lecanemab both show us that there's something going on. There seems to be this effect, it's doing something, although that effect also is really small. This drug is exceptionally good at removing amyloid from the brain. Now, if it was just amyloid that was causing the problem, you'd imagine people do a lot better than these very, very small changes that we're seeing on these like 144 point scales. Um, and that may be um, because we're targeting the wrong thing or we have to target multiple different things, uh, which is probably what we're gonna do. Maybe it's similar to cancer drugs in the future where you have to do multiple different things. Or we may find out a whole new path would be better than this amyloid targeted uh, path. Eric Badera of the I also University. I gotta say. Oh, sorry, yeah. Can I say one more thing? Yes. Uh, we only have data for the first 18 months. So we actually don't know what's also going to happen three years down the line. And there's some concern because these individuals who get the drug have more brain atrophy. What does that mean three, four years down the line? So we definitely need longer trials assessing the efficacy and safety of this drug. All right, so you would say there are too many question marks at this point for approval? Uh, I would say that it's likely to be approved because we have the same question marks with lecanemab, which got FDA approved. I think this requires a very good discussion about risks and benefits if you're gonna start this drug. I think what we know now that drug's probably gonna be in the wild sometime soon. Right. Uh, the healthcare system is not very good at that, so we'll have to see what actually looks like in the wild. We'll have to leave it here. Thank you so much, Eric Madera of the University of California in San Francisco. Thanks for having me.